Hello everyone. Today in this video, we'll be discussing the six lab program, which is the scanline fill algorithm. Okay. So let me show you the output of how it looks. Basically, if you know the module two, in that uh, we had the polygon filling algorithm. That's the same algorithm which we'll be discussing now. So we have a polygon which will be filling from the um, uh, bottom to the top, from the left to the right. Okay. So wherever the pixel wants to be uh, eliminated, at that places will be um, pointing the pixels, and rest of the places will be left as empty. Okay. So that's the final output. Uh, let's see how it uh, looks like. So um, first, we will be having a polygon shape here, and that uh, will be having two options: either to fill the algorithm, uh, fill the polygon, or empty the polygon. Okay. So here, if I click as uh, right click and fill polygon, at that time it will be colored as yellow, and rest of the things will be uh, kept as black itself. Okay, that's the background. And if I again click it and empty the polygon, it will just empty the polygon here. Okay, so that's the working of it. Let's see what uh, the code behind it. So if I show you the code part here, uh, except the main function, what all the functions we have is, I'll minimize the function here so that we'll get a clear uh, overview of the top overview of how the uh, how many functions are there. So these are the functions except the main, main function 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 functions are there. Okay. And we have created two variables here which are the float x1, x2, x3, x4, y1, y2, y3, y4. Since we have a shape here, the uh, x1 and y, uh, y1 denotes the first vertex, x2, y2 denotes the second vertex, and the third vertex and the fourth vertex and so on. Okay. So here is the shape I have uh, drew it roughly here. So this x1, y1, this is x2, y2, x3, y3 and x4, y4. Okay. And um, <clears throat> along with that, we have another variable which is fill flag. So where we'll be using fill flag, that we'll be discussing in the main function. Okay. So uh, here's the initialization function, and after that, we are calling this function. We are calling init function. So what does init function do? We cut down the whole uh, code into smaller parts. Okay. Uh, all the things which are present here, it's not actually that big. If you understand what is the things inside it, it will be very easy for you. Okay. So I'm calling the init function. What does init function do? It will initialize the background color. As 000, which is the black color. If I like uh, write it as 111, it will be uh, white background. So if you want to see the output, you can see here the 111 is denoting the white color. So here the background will be, uh, will be white, uh, unlike the previous one where it was black. And color 3f will be setting the color of the uh, pen which we are using. And the point size will set the point size. And this is the load entity and blue also 2D. So these are the same initialization functions we are using for the other programs as well. The, there is no difference, much difference in it. So here, as you can see, the background is um, white here instead of um, black as uh, in the previous case. So that's uh, what the function is used for, uh, initialization function. So let's keep it as such here, and uh, we'll be moving on to the next one. After the init, we are calling the display function, right? So let's see what is in the display function. In the display function, we have x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4. The values are uh, the coordinates are given. The x1, y1 is 200, 200. So as you can see in this diagram, it is 200, 200. x2, y2 is 100, 300. So I have written it as x2, y2 as uh, 100, 300. x3, y3 and uh, x4, y4 and so on. Okay. So these are the vertices I have specified. Then I'm using the GL3F function and uh, GL color 3F. So here the pen color is again specified as uh, blue. Because it is RGB, B is what means other is R0 means so it will not be considered. Just blue is one means the uh, pen color will be blue. So in the output, uh, if you remember, it was in the um, blue lines are driven, uh, right? And here we have the line loop uh, function. So here what it does is x1, y1 till x2, y2, from x2, y2 till x3, y3, x3, y3 till x4, y4, and again loop back to x1, y1. The four um, lines should be drawn, right? That's what this function does. And if fill flag is equal to 1, what is fill flag? Fill flag is nothing but what we have selected here. If it is 1, at that time we will be filling the polygon. If it is 2, means we are not doing anything. So only if it is 1, then only call the scanline fill algorithm. If it is 2, at that time leave it as such. So it will not be called and nothing will be destroyed. Okay. So here is the main function scanline fill. Scan fill will be called with the parameters x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and x4, y4. So let's go to the scan fill algorithm. Here in the scan fill algorithm, we are doing the um, initialization things and after that we are uh, calling the edge detect function for four edges and here also we are drawing the pixels. So edge detect is also another function which is very important and here we have the edge detect. In the edge detect also we are doing some uh, algorithms which we will be discussing in depth what is actually happening behind the scene. And uh, draw pixel is nothing but just the drawing of the pixel marking the point wherever x and y is specified uh, in the draw pixel. So if you cut down the code, what's happening here is uh, it's looking like there are many functions, right? But it's actually not that much. 
Why? Because uh, if you see how many functions are there in total, six functions are there, right? But what's happening here? First, we are calling display function. What does display function do? It literally just makes the outline, right? Outline of the polygon. That's all what it does and calls the scan length algorithm. That's what the display is doing. And in it is just initializing it. And fill menu, just if it's one means one, if it's two means two, that's all what it does. And uh, here we have the drop itself to just draw the point, that's all. And the main thing is in the scan fill and edge detect. So let's we discuss in depth what does uh, scan fill do. In scan fill, as you can see, there is an uh, array here, R E and uh, L E and R E, which is of length 500, 500. Why I've taken 500 is because see, we are accessing each pixel, okay, from 0, 0 till 500, 500, we are accessing each pixel. So here, uh, 0 to 500, again 0 to 500, 500, 0 to 500, and so on, how many times? 500 times. So each pixel will be accessed. LE and RE means, LE means left edge, and RE means right edge. So we are, uh, what we are storing is, we are storing the um, X values in LE and RE. So if, imagine LE as this one, it's a big array which is of uh, length 500, and RE is also a big array which is of length 500, and the initial, initial points which we are putting in uh, LE and RE is all as 500, all as 0. Because i is running from 0 to 500 and each uh, location of i is getting specified with 500 in LE and each location of RI, uh, RE is getting specified with uh, 0. Um, as, uh, so what uh, we get out of this LE uh, with all the 500 spaces with the 500 value, RE all the spaces with 0 value. Okay, that's what's happening, uh, happened till now. After we have done that, we are calling which function? Edge detect x1, y1, uh, x2, y2. From x1, y1 to x2, y2, we are detecting the edge in it. Okay, so how, do, how does that work? Also, you are passing LE and RE. So, let's go to the edge detect function. In edge detect, we are uh, getting three variables mx, x, and temp. So, mx, x, and temp I have written here. mx, x, and temp. And i and y is also getting uh, specified here. So, i is, uh, I have written i here and y from the previous one. And what we are doing is, if y2 minus y1 is less than 0, what does y2 minus y1 mean? y2 is this one, y1 is this one. As you can see, this in the top, this in the bottom. So, y value is greater here than here. If you subtract it, it will have a positive value, right? It means 300 minus 200. But if it is less than 0, means it is in the reverse, um, what do you call that, um, edge. Okay, the slope is reverse. If the slope is reverse, just uh, swap the point so that the slope becomes positive. We are just swapping it here. Then if it is not equal to 0, at that time, uh, what you have to do is, we have to uh, divide uh, x2 minus x1 by y2 minus y1. Why we are doing the slope in the reverse manner is because if you remember in the theory part of the scanline algorithm, the formula is x plus 1 by m, right? x plus 1 by m is the next point of x. So 1 by m means the reverse of m, which is x2 minus x1 by y2 minus y1. That's what we are finding here, mx. Okay. Else, uh, mx is nothing but x2 minus x1. If it's 0, it's not divided, right? That's why. Right. And after we have got the mx value, what we are doing is we are starting from x is equal to x1. The starting point is uh, of x is x1. And uh, till where we are going from y1 till y2. See, if you observe carefully what we are doing is, we are just uh, calculating what is the x point here because i will be incrementing each time just consider this um, uh, what do you call this edge here in this edge what's happening i value will uh, y value will increment one by one each time right but x value we don't know at each point of y right so that's what we are calculating and storing in le le will store from here till here what is the x point uh, present here then from here to here what are the x points present here that will be stored in le same goes for re as well so let's see how that uh, works if x is less than le of i, le of i is uh, equal to x. What is uh, le of i initially? It is all 500. If x is less than 500, means if the x value is less than 500, means if it has not passed this one, at that time whatever value we get of x here, that will be stored. So basically in the first iteration, this will be stored, uh, storing the, all these values of x um, in the decimal point here. And then here also it will be showing the same point. Next, if x is greater than re, the next point is this one. If x is greater than re of i, re of i is initially 0, all are 0, so if it, x is greater than 0, that means x has not uh, crossed this limit, if it is greater than 0, this should be stored. So the rightmost part and leftmost uh, most parts are specified here, and that is getting stored here. And x is incremented by what? mx. mx is nothing but 1 by m. So we will get the next x point. Like that we are doing for each edge. For this edge we will do first, then this one, then this one, then this one. After the four edges are over, we will be calling the display function. Where we are calling the edges here, we are calling the edges here. After that is then we'll be calling the um, draw pixel function from each point of y uh, till 0 to 500. So for each point from 0 to 500, this is getting called, and all the x and y values are plotted. Okay, so that's all what is there in this program. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.